Hi, everyone. I just wanted to drop in and say a quick hello and uh, touch in with everybody on this latest happening in Georgia, where an on-site community association manager was shot and killed on Monday. I don't know how I miss this, probably because I'm always just looking for things related to Florida, but I think that it is something that we need to discuss because I've always thought of it being a possibility because there are so many angry residents and I'm sure that as a community manager, you too have um, probably thought of it as being one of your biggest fears and what it is that you guys do. It is probably the most dangerous thing that you guys deal with. If you've missed what we've been posting, uh, basically on Monday uh, this week, a around mid-afternoon, a condo association resident walked into the manager's office of an on-site condo in downtown or midtown Atlanta, Georgia, and shot the manager and the building engineer. The manager was uh, deceased as of the reports that were coming out. The engineer was in the hospital, and they have basically just – they haven't said that he's in critical condition, so I think he's just um, still receiving – help at the hospital and uh, we'll keep you up to date on his as well. The uh, gentleman at the accounting firm was also found deceased um, upon the time of these news reports. So she actually went from that location at the condo association down, I don't think it was very far, down the road to the man, to the accountant's office where she used to work. And again, the accountant's office had some kind of tie. They probably did the accounting with the association. And uh, she shot that uh, accountant who was her supervisor previously when she worked there. So I wanted to kind of go in and let's talk about what we know so far. And I'm sure as this trial goes into, uh, we go into the trial, we'll we'll find out more information. I'm going to follow this trial. I've already decided. And I will report back to you guys on what's going on. Um, I don't want to give the shooter any kind of extra recognition or anything like that. So I'm going to try to avoid her altogether. Although I will tell you what the circumstances leading up to what happened, uh, what we know so far. I'd like to focus on the gentleman that lost his life. There was actually two gentlemen that lost their lives. Uh, One was the on-site manager of the High Rise Condo Association in Midtown Atlanta. His name was Michael Shinners, and he was a part of the CAI in Georgia, and he was a PCAM as well. What the residents say about him was he was just really hardworking, super nice, did a lot for the community, and he was actually even trying to help this woman who was having issues with the condo association. It does sound as if this was a troubled woman, obviously, but it seems that, you know, she didn't just have issues with only him. She had issues with a lot of people. So let's watch what we have so far. We'll continue our live Team 2 coverage with Channel 2's Larry Spruill. Larry, you were reporting live on this as we broke into programming just before 4 in the afternoon. And since then, you've learned a lot more about the victims. And, Wendy, I spoke with the Fulton County Medical Examiner's Office earlier tonight. He tells me that Michael Shiner lived here in Alpharetta and Wesley Freeman lived here in Atlanta. Now, Shiner was a property manager right here at this building. That's where that shooting happened inside the management office earlier this evening. Now, I did speak with neighbors and they are reacting to what happened inside their building. Chaos in Midtown Atlanta Monday afternoon. Police blocked off the front of the 1280 condo building for much of the afternoon as they investigate a deadly shooting. Monday night, the Fulton County Examiner's Office told me the names of the victims who died, Wesley Freeman and property manager Michael Shiners. Christian Bell was on the elevator when everything started. I looked across the way at the girl who uh, just got the elevator as well, and, you know, she just said, they're shooting. An ATF task force source confirmed to Channel 2 this woman, Raisa Kegney, is the suspected shooter who shot three people, killing two. She then took off, but hours later, ATF arrested her at the International Terminal at Hartsville-Jackson International Airport. An ATF task force source also tells Channel 2 they contacted a taxi company and found out she was dropped off at the airport. They also found a 9mm Glock pistol in her purse. Meanwhile, back in Midtown, neighbors weren't allowed inside the building for safety reasons. Many people, including Brian Hall, 
we're shaking up. My heart goes out to like the management staff. This is not what, what you expect just to come to work. So just total shock, really. And a lot of neighbors I talked to tell me they know that suspect and that she lived here in this building. Earlier this evening, we saw SWAT team members arrive here. They searched not just the management's office, but her apartment as well, trying to figure out why all of this happened. We are live in Midtown. Larry Sproul, WSB tonight. One of our very own Mitchell Drimmer uh, actually knew and worked with Mr. Shinners, and he said that uh, there is a GoFundMe page set up for his family. And we do have that on Cam Matrix. Uh, this post was put up today, August the 26th. So if you uh, find this post right here, just look for it. And the GoFundMe is right there down below. All right. Um, I did do a little press conference on here, too. I posted the video. But honestly, I'm not even going to play it now because it doesn't. This was right after it happened or the day it happened. It didn't really give us a whole lot of information. What I want to talk about and what I find to be something that was interesting is a discussion that was had with one of the community residents who had some interaction with the shooter. This woman says that the shooter knocked on her door in the past and then introduced herself and advised her that she wanted to run for the board of directors during, in the next election. She wanted a seat on the board. So apparently this was, I mean, obviously she was one of those where she was highly aggressive in the neighborhood. She said that her inter she had three interactions with her and she didn't have any problems with her, but others had complained about her because of her behavior around the TV. Apparently um, in the TV room, people would be in there watching a game or something and she would just come in and turn it off. She said uh, she can't believe how someone who wanted to run for the board and who was receiving help from the on-site manager could do such a thing. I guess you could say we know that person, right? We know that type of person. They're just, that's all they think about. Now, another uh, thing that I did want to bring up was that it looks as if the previous, the other gentleman that was shot who was um, worked for an accounting firm, and I believe the accounting firm was tied to the condo association, um, but that was her previous employer. So the man who she shot as her previous employer, she had stated at one point in time that she he was the laziest manager she had ever met. Speaking of the accountant that she worked for. There was a lawsuit that she had filed for both of them, and in the lawsuit, she claimed retaliation, persecution, harassment, intimidation, threats, burglary, and computer hacking after noting a significant deficiency in an audit. So I guess she was going after the community audit after uh, the financials had come out. Now, the family of Mr. Schinner pushed back on what they call inaccurate information being spread throughout media online, that the man, Mr. Shinners, the who lost his life, somehow contributed to his death, and that is untrue. He had previously accused the condo association of letting people into her. She had previously, the shooter, had previously accused the condo association of letting people into her home to facilitate harassment and retaliation from the accounting firm and others. The management firm described her as dis a disgruntled resident. The family of Mr. Schinner says Michael never let any unauthorized person into anyone's home. In fact, when made aware of the situation, Michael attempted to help the woman who would later take his life. Michael's death came at the hands of a distressed woman who made a reprehensible and unfathomable decision to end innocent lives. So you guys keep his family in your prayers and also the family of the accountant as well. As we go on to learn more information about what happened, I will keep you guys in the loop. So that's what we know so far. She's been caught. She's in jail. She's going to be sentenced. And uh, we'll keep you up to date with the trial. And as I know more, and if you need you guys find out anything, uh, please keep us up to date. I, th I do believe this is a story we should definitely follow. 
uh, it is something that we in our industry need to be aware of. And a side note, I am trying to get this active shooter course online for you guys. So as soon as I do, um, I will get that posted. If by chance I can get some kind of active shooter presentation and there's not a CEU tied to it, I would really like your input as to whether or not you would find that to be interesting. I think you would, but just clarify for me, please, because I'm sure there's many more than one active shooter presentation that we can actually uh, do here on Cam Matrix. Thank you again, and you guys have a blessed weekend.